So our next speaker, he's a professional swimmer and he's a professional coach as well. So I would like to welcome Athar. So our next speaker, he brought a ThinkPad in a world full of Macs for the stocks. That's something different. Uh, we're also going to talk hardware at a free and open source software uh, conference. But yeah, pun in that word, it's not hardware. So Atava will be talking more about how uh, you can use free and open source software to help makers make it easier for them to create hardware. So he has built a software called KeyCat, which enables uh, hardware designers and makers to kind of like make their own hardware. So I invite Adava to talk more about what he has built and share his exciting journey. Yeah, so please give a huge round of applause for Athar, who's going to talk about create hardware through okay, open source you. ecosystem. Can you hear me? So hi, uh, my name is Atharva Upadde. Uh, I am principal engineer at InnoMinds. Uh, today we are going to talk about create hardware through open source ecosystem. Uh, I have co-author Shri Kumar. He is not here. Uh, he is watching live. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, what we do, uh, we are a part of InnoMinds uh, Connected Devices Group. Uh, we make custom electronic products. Uh, what I meant by custom electronic products is for the enterprise applications like phones, tablets, vehicle tracking systems. Uh, you can see there are a couple of products uh, we have shown. Uh, uh, on the left hand side, this is the world's first DIY Android smartphone we have made. Uh, then there is a smartwatch, which is an authenticator device we have used. And there is a passport verification device we have done for a Japanese customer. Uh, yeah, this is it's kind of our product portfolio. Uh, now, how did I end up here? Uh, I have designed electronic products for 10 years now. Uh, earlier, I worked at Intel, where we made uh, microprocessor boards. Uh, at, after coming to InnoMinds, we have Qualcomm platforms, which we have worked on. Uh, Qualcomm, uh, InnoMinds is a Qualcomm licensing company, so we have access to their reference design, and then we take it from there for customers. Uh, now, after some years at InnoMinds, I get an opportunity to work on uh, R&D project, uh, uh, which we actually turned into product later. Uh, so because of this in-house project, I got opportunity to uh, explore open source tools which are required in a, a hardware ecosystem. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. So how many of you have learned electronics uh, earlier uh, in the engineering, uh, any background? So very less, right? So I'm sorry for that. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so I'm gonna brief a little bit about how hardware design works, right? What are the steps? So for all of us which don't know anything about hardware design, Let's follow the analogy of constructing an apartment, right? So now you must have seen this, like drawing a circuit on the paper, right? Uh, this is my first step where I draw the circuit, LED circuit. Uh, there is a software for it in the corporate sense. So you can see this, cor this software is, th there are two softwares which mainly cor corporate use, which is one is AutoCAD and second is Altium. These are all proprietary tools what I'm talking about. So this step is similar to now I'm building plan is putting on paper, I'm putting where a staircase goes, where the lift goes and everything, uh, but in the software, okay? Yeah. The next step. So this step is a crucial one where we actually turned our design ideas to a reality, which is a printed circuit board. So as on the left hand side, you can see there is a breadboard. Breadboard you must have seen in college. So I have a battery and then LED lights up. So if you take that breadboard to a customer and sell it, he won't actually buy it, right? So you have to make a, a product out of it. So on the right hand side, as you can see, uh, it's the same circuit has been drawn on the printed circuit board uh, with a tool called, uh, it's actually a uh, Allegro tool. Uh, this is also a proprietary software. And there is one more Altium, okay? So till now we have used two tools, different tools and two different set of engineer capabilities to actually uh, till now commit here. We still not have manufactured the design, right? Now we will go into the manufacturing it. So one part in the analogy, I missed it earlier, sorry. Uh, now this is analogical to you going to the site, now marking the boundaries of it and putting it where I am going to put a hole, I'm going to put a bars and everything, right? In the apartment sense. But still I have not started constructing it. So now this is my step of construction where you can see the green color one is more called as a pre printed circuit board. You, have, you must have seen in mobile phones, laptops. And then you can see my LED, you can see a resistor, you can see a battery holder, right? All this is called 
assembly of the PCB. Okay? This is very similar to now building construction. Uh, I'm starting digging holes, I'm putting plumbing, I'm putting rods and everything, right? Now what is missing here is, now I cannot sell this PCB yet because I have to enclose it like the walls on your home, right? So now I'm gonna start a mechanical box design. So this is also one more tool which we use for mechanical box design. Uh, industry mostly uses SolidWorks, Katia kind of softwares. Uh, there are, we will talk about open source on this uh, parallel uh, later. So this is still a proprietary software for SolidWorks and Katia. So now, okay, right now we have used three different tools for three different expertise of engineers to make one PCB or, or one electronic product, right? So we will talk a little bit about uh, why corporate uses uh, or my company or any other company uses the proprietary tools, right? Uh, so first and foremost point is reliability. Uh, most of you guys are, I, I have understood that it's your software engineers, but uh, one thing is like if you make a mistake in the hardware, uh, at least you are going to get cost at $5,000 and it is going to set back your schedule by five weeks because it, it takes at least three weeks to make a new product, okay? And two weeks to make your problem go away. So $5,000 plus four and five weeks, it's a, it's a costly venture, I would say. Uh, so that's why we people like to, or people like me also like to stick to what we know, proprietary tools, right? Uh, one more thing is time to market. So I work at a company where somebody comes at me and says that, make a laptop or sorry, make a tablet or make a phone for me in under one year, right? So it's, it's crazy to make a mobile phone under one year from scratch. So we actually rely a lot upon Qualcomm reference designs, right? Because we are a Qualcomm licensing company. So if you take a Qualcomm license, uh, base designs and you want to build on top of it, these designs will be in a proprietary tool. So you don't have any wiggle room to go and check actually what is happening in the open source ecosystem. Uh, if you actually stay in this business, right? Uh, second thing is complex design capability. So uh, just to give you an example of how complex your PCBs are, so if you are, take an iPhone if, and check the teardown videos on YouTube, so your iPhone PCB has 16 layers of it, okay? So just to give an example of it, uh, it at least has 16 story building inside it, okay? So that how complex design these are and so that's why proprietary tools people stick to because they have been there for 30 years, they have been highly tuned, you have all automated Python scripts running on it. I mean, the ecosystem has evolved around it. So now, also one more thing is talent accessibility. Uh, now, if you see last 20 years, engineers has picked up their tools. So as I said earlier, we counted one, two, three, three tools required for electronic design. Now, all these three tools have different people who actually are expertise in it. So it has become a segmentation nowadays. So uh, it's very fairly available uh, talent pools across all of these proprietary tools. So now I really ask myself like, why somebody would go for open source tools, right? So this is the problem, right? So if you actually calculated all of this tool cost, you can buy Innova Krista. So it's, it's very, very costly venture, just as upfront itself because this is upfront cost. I'm not even say, saying that you have started doing the design. This is, you went into shop and you bought something and you still don't have anything. Now you have to go and find a talent who uses this, this tool. Then you have to manufacture these devices. And that's how there are, what, 2% of hardware companies and the rest of the software companies, right? So we actually also face the same problem for the, our in-house project and we, think, we thought like what we can do to solve this and then uh, many of you would have been an enthusiast about uh, open source system. I was not. Uh, I have a hardcore proprietary guy till last year. And then my boss basically pushed me into it uh, because he said, look, its design is not complex. You can give it a try. And so that's how my journey started as a uh, FOSS enthusiast. Okay, so. So now I came across this tool, which is called KeyCAD. Uh, you can pronounce it as KeyCAD or KaiCAD, okay? Uh, this is a tool which was actually uh, funded by CERN. It's a nuclear research institute from Europe, uh, which actually did the Large Hadron Collider. So the same company actually funded this project. Uh, uh, this, is, this tool is called Electronic Design Automation Tool, where you can actually do all the stuff which we talked about earlier drawing schematics, which is drawing circuits on the paper, then actually putting a layout, and then 
Uh, so, mechanical, so mechanical design, there is one more free uh, open source tool which is called FreeCAD, but I'm not going to talk about it because I'm, I don't have much expertise there. So which we talked, so two parts of the crucial electronic design which are shown here, the red color box uh, basically shows that the, these two tools allow you to draw the circuits. Next green box, which are the two tools which are available under this keycad. Uh, allows you to draw the layout, right? So uh, this is the crucial part where now at free cost, you have been able, you now you are able to actually draw the circuits, make them ready for manufacturing, right? Uh, uh, one more thing is this tool is in now its seventh version. It's very stable. Uh, now ecosystem is evolving around it. Uh, yeah, so there are a couple of direct advantages of using KiCad over proprietary tools, right? So one thing is uh, full design flow available under one kit. Uh, what it means by is, if you, if, I, if you actually understood what I said earlier, uh, there are three different tools for a proprietary. So there are three different companies who actually have three different tools which makes the electronic product. Now this tool has come up with at least make the two processes under one hat. So now with using this tool, you can at least make a PCB uh, stand alone with this tool. You don't need any other software, right? Uh, one more is exposure to full design flow. So what we have seen around, or what, in, what I have seen in 10 years is 90% of the engineers, or 95% of the engineers, we actually don't use both the tools. So I would actually gladly say, I admit that earlier, like two years back, I was the guy who only does schematic drawing, or the drawing circuits. And PCB layout, I won't touch, because it's beneath me, I used to say. <laughs> uh, now, as soon as my boss pushed me into it, and then I started understanding it, so, the more control I got over the process, the more better I got as an engineer as well, right? And then that thing which was beneath me started actually I liking it and then I adopted it, okay? So this is one of the advantages of that. It exposes you to the full design flow, okay? Uh, let's look at one more. So you have to understand from the hardware point of view, we are very control freaks. Uh, so we need a control in each and every processes because as we said, mistake, $5,000. So one of the key aspects of control is if you ask for a help, somebody should reply to you. So this has a very vibrant community. KiCad has a very vibrant community. Uh, if you actually post a question, you'll get a reply under like one day. I got under one hour. So uh, this is very vibrant. So you can rest assured that you have a very good sub, uh, response coming from the community if you end up in a problem. Uh, this is uh, one more direct advantage of KiCad is it's a unique advantage, I would say. No proprietary tools out there actually supports this. So now if your PCB is basically now ready to make for manufacturing, uh, one thing you have to see is, is it actually okay? Does it look okay? Uh, am I making any mistakes, right? Because one mistake, $5,000, right? So uh, this, this tools give you 3D visualization uh, uh, of the components, how it looks like and all that stuff, right? So this is one of the most big advantages of using KiCad. Uh, apart from direct advantages, I would say there are some intangibles, right? So uh, you won't see this happening under in like under in six months, but you will see this effect over the long I mean, the long term. I, and this also I guess because we haven't seen it, but this is what I guess. So one thing is global uh, community exposure. As soon as I started using KiCad. Uh, so before that, I would say that, see, hardware guys don't share, okay? Because our design is our IP, okay? And I don't know, there is a lot of modularity in the hardware, but still we don't share. Uh, so what happened is when I started using KiCad, now I started looking at a community which shares the hardware design across. So most of the, if you see open source hardware projects uh, are done in KiCad. So what happens is you get instant access to thousands of designs, uh, which actually cuts down your time to market. Also, it cuts down your, if it, it actually improves your efficiency, right? So these are the things I am also looking from, from the corporate point of view, right? Time to market is less, my efficiency is better. So uh, this actually, this KiCad gives you that advantage, right? Uh, as soon as I started looking at KiCad, uh, I was connected on Twitter and I saw people doing their own designs in different, different uh, areas of expertise. Uh, I also started looking at where they make that design, right? In, in hardware, is the most important part is where you make that design. So there is a lot of political debate, right? China, India, and all this. So uh, 
where you make it is also very important in hardware. So that in KiCad, when you get exposed to, you understand where people are making design, where they are making China, they are making Indonesia, how we are making it, right? Uh, are what components they are using? Are they using China ecosystem products or uh, Texas instruments like American uh, ecosystem products? So these are the things you get exposed to when you actually start using open source KiCad tool. Uh, yeah, one of the main factors. And uh, the last one, the intangible, I would say, is uh, uh, it's a little bit emotional, right? Like, resource become maker. Uh, we all are resources on the payroll, okay, at the end of the day. But there is a chance to actually turn it around, right? So what I saw in myself also, that when you are exposed to complete ecosystem or a complete design flow, what happens is you just don't talk about ideas. Now you start to realize it. Because... You have open source tool, now you, what you have to make is just uh, hardware, right? And that will cost you around 10,000 rupees just to prove your idea, right? So that's why I, after using a KiCad tool, I started looking at complete product and I'll show you some pictures of what products I've done later. Uh, so this is one of the big advantages. Second thing in corporate is uh, we follow what our colleagues do most of the time, okay? Uh, there, that's why there is one leader and all they are followers. So, uh, there is something called domino effect, you must have heard. So when I started using this tool, uh, people started uh, st uh, looking at my desk and started talking to me and asking like, what is this? This is, looks like a new tool, right? And then I tell them it's free. And then second thing I tell them is it's completely controlled, right? Uh, you can control whole design process. And third thing is it's free, okay? So uh, all of these advantages now patch up on and saying that, key, okay, I'm gonna also try this tool once. Uh, so this started as my colleague also adopted, and then that colleague also started design. He ended up problems. Uh, so I have also blew the board, first board which I did with KiCad, but eventually I have gone better. So it will, it will, it will happen, but you will reach there. Uh, so now many people have asked, like, okay, this is Gyan on the software side. Have you done anything out of it? So I would like to actually show you. This is the project. Uh, this is a product actually, right? So we have done in-house. So this is, we call it smart terminal. Um, you can see on the left-hand side, black box, and the right-hand side, black box, so small and big. So I would actually admit that, so left-hand side, black box is actually made in proprietary tools, okay? And the right-hand side is something which we made in KiCad and using FreeCAD for the mechanical design. So we are also work in progress. We are reaching there uh, to make that big black box also in uh, open source tools. Uh, Little bit about the product, so uh, from the vision point of view, so India has 25 crore children, we want to educate everybody of them, we need digital classrooms, right? Uh, right now the way to make digital classrooms is people keep buying laptops and tablets, uh, I don't think, I mean we think so, we believe so, that is not a sustainable model. So we have come up with a product which, change, which turns your digital classroom, we actually try to make a classroom digital under 50% of the cost and with a more than 50% of the efficiency. Uh, so a little bit details, I will come back to that later. Uh, I have a small video, I, I don't see any audio for that. But so I could show you, you can see the blender, uh, there are one guy is playing game, all this is happening on one laptop, okay? Uh, all eight terminals and we can actually make it to 16, okay? This is the application of what I earlier showed. Uh, one more application is you can see earlier eight terminals, now you can see 16 of them all uh, with a high resolution and 60 F 30 FPS. Uh, this actually is running on i3 desktop, which costs 30,000 rupees, okay? Uh, Linux, okay, that's the only software word I know, okay? So it runs on Linux and Wayland, okay? So, yeah, that's it. I mean, uh, thoughts of it on this is, uh, now every resource uh, in your company, right? Uh, I'm not, I'm not called call employee, it's a resource. So every resource in your company now starts to adopt open source tools, uh, looks around ecosystem. Uh, now he has the opportunity to make the ideas into reality. He starts to make their invention. So now we'll have the product economy. Yeah. So that's it from my side, yeah. So these are some hobby projects I did, uh, some earring, and then the right-hand side is uh, your router UPS board. This is all made in KiCad. Right? So you can, I'm, what I'm trying to say is you can do your hobby projects like earring for wife, okay, to uh, the commercial projects for router UPS, okay. Thank you.
So you can reach me at this. Uh, I'm around, you can catch me. Thank you.